And in January of 1913, in December of 1913, he signed the Federal Reserve Act, bringing the Federal Reserve System into place in America and did what Thomas Jefferson said must never happen. He took the control of the money away from the people by taking it away from the Congress and gave it to a group of private individuals who have to pay taxes on the money they loan the government. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. Let's say the government, which always needs money because it always spends more than it is able to collect in taxes. So the federal government needs a billion dollars. Since they gave away their ability to create the money, they have to go to the creators. The creators of the money according to the legislation passed in 1913. Incidentally, the Federal Reserve Board has been in operation in this country since 1913. They have never been audited one time. Do you see that we've been taken captive? That's all I'm trying to... My whole point, somebody asked me, Pastor, why are you sharing that? My whole point is to let you know you're in bondage and don't know it. You're serving two masters and you don't know it. They are using you and you don't know it so since they the, the government needs a billion dollars since they can't create the money because in 1913 they gave that responsibility and they gave that authority to the federal reserve they have to go to our government has to go to the federal reserve and ask them for the billion dollars well since the federal reserve is a private corporation they're not about ready to just give their money away so they say to the government we will loan you the billion dollars for your agreement to pay it back with interest. But now wait a minute. The government doesn't have the ability to create the money. The Federal Reserve creates the money. So the Federal Reserve, through legislation in Congress, not that they control it, but for the actual printing of the money, that's the only thing we have the ability to do, Congress tells the Treasury Department, the Fed will loan us a billion dollars, print a billion dollars in U.S. Treasury bonds. So for a thousand dollars, they print a billion dollars of bills, of bonds. Those bonds are given to the Federal Reserve, a billion dollars. Now the Federal Reserve in bonds plus interest. The Federal Reserve then gives the bonds to the government to pay its bills. But watch me, because you're not thinking. The government needed a billion dollars. They borrowed a billion dollars. But the Federal Reserve said, we'll loan you the billion dollars plus interest but it only prints the billion dollars. So the interest payments are never created and put into the system. So how is the government ever going to pay them back? They didn't have the billion dollars to begin with. If they didn't have the billion, then they didn't have the billion plus interest. So they get given the billion, but they can't pay the interest because the interest money was never created and put in the system. That's how it's growing a billion, six million dollars a day. We can't pay the interest. The money is not in the system. But what about you? Oh, it gets worse than that. It's worse than that. Let's take that billion dollars. Legislation has been created that the Federal Reserve, having that one billion dollars of treasury bonds sitting in its belly at interest, can lend, as a result of having that one billion, they can lend 15 billion. Wait. Paper money. Credit. No, no, there's no substance, there's nothing backing it, but they can come to you and say, we will loan you 
15 billion on credit because we have 1 billion that we created and had the government give back to us now we can loan 15 billion that 15 billion plus the one is 16 billion dollars in that one transaction of which there are thousands that one trans transaction where they've got 16 billion dollars out there that people are paying them in interest that in reality the money doesn't even exist but what does exist is your money that they take and 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 we wonder why bankruptcies were more in the first three months of 2003 than in the history of this country is there a reason for that yes it's called credit it's called debt how many of you agree that's awful and that shouldn't be they shouldn't be able to you know put in a billion dollars and take out the billion plus the interest money because more is being taken out of the system than's put in the system keeping the people enslaved to the tune of seven trillion dollars in national debt alone that doesn't include state debt that doesn't include municipality debt it doesn't include personal debt that's just the federal debt that's just what we borrowed from the Federal Reserve that we can't pay back are, are you ready how many of you agree that's awful okay what about you let's see you can never get out of debt in a usury system with a built-in shortage of money did you hear me now watch uh, let's say you're gonna buy a house let's say that house is hundred and fifty thousand dollars and let's say current rate today is seven percent you do understand that by the end of that 30-year mortgage you will have paid for a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house three hundred and sixty thousand dollars you do understand that so let me ask you a question you bought a house for $150,000. Why did you buy it for $150,000? Watch me, because that's what it was worth. Why didn't you pay $360,000 for your house? Because your house is not worth $360,000. So let me ask you a question. Why are you paying $200,000 more for your $150,000 house than it's worth? Because you're caught in a system that tells you you have to because you don't see any way out and the world if you were of the world would love you but you are not of this world and they hate you they use you now let me ask you a question you got a house 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 all these houses you drive up and down the road they're building them everywhere houses 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 every one of them is in this situation now, when you go to buy your $150,000 house, say you're going to build a $150,000 house, the bank will either credit your account, because they don't have the money on reserve anyway, they will credit your account $150,000, is that right? And then you'll write checks out of that $150,000 to pay the builder, to pay the lights, to pay for the whatever, right? Okay, now let me ask you a question. So $150,000 got created and put in the system, right? Where's the other $200,000 coming from? See, you yelled and screamed when you saw the federal government doing it, but you do it every day.